So I do uh, vegan food that you actually want to eat. I'm a recording artist and a music producer. Um, I do hip hop. I make uh, YouTube videos about books. I make like these huge projects. I'm a cinema student. I want to become a filmmaker. I make des vidéos, uh, des vlogs quotidiens. J'ai une um, une chaîne principale, une chaîne secondaire. I am a blogger. I also have a YouTube channel. I wrote a book. I'm a speaker, and this all started when I was diagnosed with breast cancer at only 24 years old. So on YouTube, I do comedy vlogging, and I also do uh, a lot of Disney content. So I uh, do Disney covers. I do big Disney song mashups, and I like cosplay all the characters. And uh, yeah. yeah, I document the process of it, and then I try to create a story out of it, and then I use vlogging to establish a story and connect to the audience, and hopefully my my videos and projects inspire other people to create of their own. So we take uh, comfort foods that are traditionally not vegan and very like heavily meat based and we create like popular uh, fast food chains food and, and turn it into the vegan counterpart. And I also happen to be trans so I'm kind of advocating for trans people within the hip hop culture and yeah, that's pretty much what I do. So my chaîne principale, uh, je parle de tout et de rien en buvant un verre de vin et uh, je fais des jeux, je fais des... Um des listes, les choses que j'aime, les choses que j'aime pas. Euh, c'est vraiment dur à décrire ce que je fais sur ma chaîne parce que c'est extrêmement varié. So I started really just blogging about my daily life and what it was like, my treatments and so on and so forth. And then it ended up being um, an online diary, then transformed into a really informative and resourceful website for other people who are going through the same thing. I think it's just a matter of continuing being creative um, and just kind of hoping to lead more people back in that direction. Because I think YouTube, there was a lot of creativity before. Yeah. And I feel like it just kind of hasn't gone away completely. It's just kind of gotten like lost in its path. So I think it's just a matter of like taking creativity as like a thing and just like leading it back on the right path. Yeah. I think it's passion that drives me because some people just do it because it's a job or it's just because they want to get money or get paid for it. But I think that when you really like something, and you do it, it's like, it doesn't matter how many time it takes or how much are you gonna get paid. Like just when you love it, you do it with everything you have, with all the time you have. And it's so amazing how you can see at the end the creation and it's just like, wow, like I did it myself, you know? The project is not about the minions. Like any of my other videos, it's not about the project I made, but the message that comes across it and the purpose of the project. And this one in particular, it's not about uh, building the minions, but building myself skills that I can then channel into future projects. So the essence of the video is about me learning a bunch of different skills because little do you know, minions have a lot of little details and require a lot of different skills. I think I've always been a positive person. I'm always someone who likes to hold on to I think in anything that happens, there's always something good. There's always the good within the bad. I like to find that. That's a challenge to myself. Um, how do I remain positive is that I, I it's, it's an active thing. I don't, I'm not just positive. I'm like constantly trying to take action to become positive and to see the good. Whether or not it's me counting my blessings or spending time with my loved ones or just doing what I love, that's how I remain positive is by taking action and doing things, the things that make me happy like, like YouTubing and vlogging and writing. It used to be a lot more opinionated than it is now. Now I try to really talk about like my life on a daily basis, like relationships, like being an ambitious person and things like that. But I'm always gonna I'm always gonna talk about myself, so I always talk about my struggles and stuff. But I just try to like do it in a way where it's like this is my struggles. You you can't understand the fact that I'm trans and all that, but you can still relate to a lot of what I'm going through. Well, you know what? It was it was weird because I when I first started making the videos, I kind of made the videos that I thought people wanted to see and I made them very close to like what other cooking shows were doing and what was on TV and I was really uncomfortable doing it and I bored myself 
and it wasn't until I was like, this isn't working, and if I'm falling asleep watching my videos, then other people don't want to watch them. And I met with someone, they were just like, just let's just turn the camera on and see what happens. And and when I edited that, it was just like very authentic. It was very true to me. Um, it was my weird, awkward personality that I've now embraced instead of trying to hide it all the time. Um, so now it's just, it's it's me. I'm just being myself. J'ai jamais commencé mes vidéos en pensant qu'il y aurait des Français ou des, euh, des Suisses ou des Belges qui écouteraient. J'ai vraiment commencé mes vidéos, puis c'est comme eux qui m'ont trouvé. Puis ils sont tellement plus nombreux en France euh, qu'au Québec euh, à parler le français que c'est sûr que euh, ils sont dix fois plus nombreux euh, en France. Donc c'est sûr que ça en prend moins là-bas qu'ils me connaissent et qui aiment ma chaîne pour qu'ils soient tellement nombreux dans mes statistiques. Being the size that I am, I'm still competing against people with a million subscribers. Like that's my direct competition still. So yeah, there like there's there's definitely that struggle of trying to break through and getting yourself noticed by other other viewers and just kind of having your viewers kind of like share and just reach that next audience. But sometimes yeah, it's it's very hard because you have these you have these viewers who've been watching the bigger YouTubers for years and years and years and I don't blame them like that's like those are their guys to watch so it's kind of just like breaking their breaking their uh, their routine and kind of making yourself part of their routine as well at some point you have to discover your own style and my style is inspired by all these people I've been watching over the years and it's became my uh, my style at first it was difficult for me because I have no idea. I just know that when I started YouTube, uh, what I like are books. So I started watching other people that actually showcases their books and then I just learned from them and then probably the years that I do it, I just evolved my own style, I guess. I mean, I'll be honest, it's been a struggle. Um, in terms of like financially, you always kind of have a little bit of the financial burden and then making the videos as high quality as we make them. Um, it costs money and I wouldn't be able to do it without my fiance who like really helps motivate me on those like really dark dark evenings when you're like oh my god I can't pay my rent or I can't pay but it's it's with putting everything a hundred percent full throttle um, it, It's really paid off and it, it's starting. It's a business now, which is really cool Yeah, I, I look back at where I was like in October I'm like, I don't know how I made it past that point to where I am now, but I did it and and I'm a better person for it, I think. Montreal is not enough, the States is not enough. I really want to um, make sure that I reach out to as many as people as I can, just so because I know I can help so many more people. And I want to do that for a living. So that's the ultimate goal. How I will achieve it, I will let you know in a couple of years. <laughs> It'll happen, but that's, that's just what I want to do. Yeah.